Welcome to the second module of this course, Data Visualization. This module covers the five key plots, their descriptions and implementation of these plots in Python. Data visualization is the process of putting information into a visual format, like a map or graph, so that it is easier for people to understand and learn from. The main goal of data visualization is to make it easier to find patterns, trends, and outliers in large data sets. People often use this term the same way they use others, like information graphics, information visualization, and statistical graphics. That means, data visualization is a way to show information visually, drawing attention to patterns and trends in the data and giving the reader quick insights. After data is acquired, analyzed, and modeled, it must be displayed to draw conclusions. Data visualization is part of data presentation architecture, DPA, which identifies, locates, manipulates, formats, and delivers data efficiently. There are five key plots that are used for data visualization. They are bar graph, histogram, scatter plot, area plot, and pie plot. We need data visualization because it identifies areas in which improvements and attention are required to be made. It sheds light on the many elements. It is helpful to have an understanding of which product goes in which location. Predict sales quantities. Visualization makes it easier for business users to see connections and patterns in the data, as well as to understand what it all means. By looking at these patterns, users can focus on specific parts of the data that need more attention and figure out how important these parts are to moving their business forward. Building ways of absorbing information. Users can get a lot of information about business and operational conditions through data visualization. It helps people who have to make decisions see how different sets of data relate to each other. It gives people new ways to look at data by using maps, fever charts, and other rich visuals. Visual data discovery makes it more likely that the organization will find the information it needs and be more productive than its competitors. Visualize relationship and patterns in businesses. In today's highly competitive business world, it is important to find the link between operating conditions and business performance. This is where data visualization comes in. When executives are able to make these kinds of connections, they can find the problem's root cause and act quickly to fix it. Let's say a food company is looking at their monthly customer data, which is shown in bar charts. The charts show that the company's score in that region has dropped by 5 points in the last few months, which suggests that there's a problem with customer satisfaction in that area. Take action on the emerging trends faster. Visualization makes it easier for the person making the decision to understand changes in customer behavior and market conditions across multiple data sets. When a company knows how its customers feel and has other information about them, it can act on new business opportunities before its competitors do. Geological based visualization. Geospatial visualization has come about because so many websites offer web services that catch people's attention. These kinds of websites are required to use information about the customer's location that is already in their customer information. There are many Python libraries for data visualization. However, the matplotlib is the most popular among them. In this module, we will learn data visualization in Python using matplotlib. Matplotlib is a Python library that is a multi-platform library for displaying data that is built on the NumPy array. It can be used in shell, web applications, graphical user interface toolkits, and Python scripts. John D. Hunter came up with the idea for the matplotlib in 2002. It has an active group of people working on it, and it is given out under a license similar to BSD. Its first version came out in 2003, and on July 1, 2019, version 3.1.1 came out. Matplotlib 2.0.x works with Python 2.7 through 3.6 until June 23, 2007. With Matplotlib 1.2, Python 3 support began. The last version of Matplotlib that works with Python 2.6. There are different toolkits that can be used to improve the way the Matplotlib works. Some of these tools need to be downloaded separately, while others can be moved along with the Matplotlib source code but need to be downloaded. These dependencies are BashMap, it is a set of tools for making maps that includes different map projections, coastlines, and political borders. Cartopy, 
It is a mapping library with object-oriented definitions for map projections and the ability to change any point, line, polygon, or image. Excel Tools, Matplotlib gives utilities a way to share data with Microsoft Excel. Plot3D, it is used to make 3D plots. NACGRID, it is a way to talk to the NACGRID library to put irregularly spaced data on a grid. The Matplotlib architecture is made up of three different layers, which are Backend layer, the backend layer is the bottom layer of the figure. It is where the different plotting functions are put into action. From the backend layer, there are three important classes. Figure, canvas, renderer, and event. Figure canvas is the surface on which the figure will be drawn. It handle the mouse and keyboard events. Artist layer, the second layer of the building is the artist layer. It is in charge of the different plotting functions, such as axis, which tells the renderer how to be used on the figure canvas. Scripting layer. Our code will run on the top layer, which is called the scripting layer. Almost automatically, the methods in the scripting layer take care of the other layers. All we have to worry about is the current state, figure and subplot. The matplotlib is a massive library. It is beyond the scope to learn everything of it. Neither it is necessary. In this lesson, we are going to cover matplotlib basics which will help you to learn the essentials efficiently. Let's start with the installation. You can install matplotlib in any Python environment. Here are how to install it in popular environments. Installing matplotlib in conda environment. Conda install matplotlib. Installing matplotlib with pip. Pip install matplotlib. Installing matplotlib in Google Colab, not necessary. It is pre-installed there. Now we know how to install matplotlib. Let's have an idea about the matplotlib figure now. Usually, it has the following parts. Figure, it is a complete figure with one or more axes, plots. Figures can be thought of as canvases that hold plots. Axes, a figure can have more than one axis. It is made up of two or three axis objects if it is 3D. There is a title, an X label, and a Y label for each axis. Axis, axes are the objects that look like lines and are in charge of making the limits of the graph. Artist, text objects, line 2D objects, and collection objects, which we see on the graph, are all examples of artists. Most artists are bound to axes. Enough talking about data visualization. Let's write the code. Let's create a Google Colab notebook and name data underscore visualization. Our first plot is the bar graph. In this graph, we will plot the marks of a group of students who obtained in different programming language exams. Create a code cell at the beginning. After that, type with the import matplotlib dot piplot as plt. Then create a variable named figure after that store the figure method of plt module in this variable. Now, create another variable named ax. Then store the add underscore axes method of fig object. Here the coordinates are 0, 0, 1, 1. After that, create a variable named language. Then convert it into a list using square brackets. Let's add some programming language as the list element. C, C, Java. Python and C sharp. Now declare another variable named student. Then convert it into a list. And the list elements are 75, 60, 85, 90, 40. It is time to draw the bar graph. Type x dot bar. Then pass the language and the student variable as the arguments. Finally, type plt dot show and run the program. Here we can see the bar graph. Very easy, right? Let's move on to the next graph, the histogram. An accurate depiction of the distribution of numerical data may be found in the form of a histogram. An approximation of the probability distribution of a continuous variable is what this term refers to. This is a representation of a bar graph. 
The histogram plotting involves the following steps. Bin the range of values. Divide the entire range of values into a series of intervals. Count how many values fall into each interval. In most cases, the bins are set to be successive intervals of a variable that do not overlap with one another. Let's create a code cell to create write the code to plot histogram. Now, we are ready to write code to plot histograms. Let's imagine a hypothetical classroom. We want to plot a histogram of the marks obtained by the students. The ranges of the marks are 0 to 25, 26 to 50, 51 to 75, and 76 to 100. These four ranges are the four bins of the histogram. Enough talking about the problem we are going to plot. Let's start coding. At first, type, from, matplotlib, import, piplot, as, plt. After that, import, numpy, as, np. Now create two variables fig, and axe. Then separate them by a comma. After that access the subplots method of plt object. And use one, one is the argument to this method. Next, take variable. Let's say a is the variable. Now get the array method of np object. The array elements are, 22 comma 87 comma 5 comma 43 comma 56 comma 73 comma 55 comma 54 comma 11 comma 20 comma 51 comma 5 comma 79 comma 31 comma 27. Now it is time to define the histogram. Simply call the hist method of axe object. The first argument of this method is a. Then define the bins equals. 0, 25, 50, 75, 100. After that, his type equals bar. Now, use set underscore title method of the axe object. The title is histogram of result. After that, use the set underscore sticks method of axe object. The bins will be the argument. That means 0, 25, 50, 75, 100. Use the set underscores label method of axe object. We want to show marks as this label. In the same way, the label is number of students. Finally, use the plt dot show to generate the histogram. Now, run the program. And here we can see the histogram. Very easy, right? Next, we are going to plot the scatter plot. In scatter plots, data points are shown on horizontal and vertical axes in an effort to demonstrate the degree to which one variable is influenced by another one. A marker is used to represent each row of data in the table. The location of the marker is determined by the values in the columns that are mapped to the x and y axes. Another dimension may be added to the plot by assigning a third variable to correlate to the size or color of the markers. This will give the graphic even more depth. Now we are going to write code to plot a scatter plot to compare the range of grades to the grades of boys and girls using two distinct colors for each group. First of all, type, import, matplotlib, dot, piplot, as, plt. Then create a variable named girls underscore grades. Then store 89, 88, 70, 95, 100, 75, 70, 80, 40, and, 55 in it as a list. After that, create another variable named boys underscore grades. Then again, store. 95. 90. 85. 70. 60. 55. 
100, 35, 40, and 25, as a list. We need another list. Let's name it grades underscore range. And the list elements are 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. Now, define a variable named figure. Then store the figure method of PLT object in it. Then, create another variable named X. Then store the add underscore axes method of fig object in it. The arguments are 0, 0, 1, and 1. Now, use the scatter method of axe object. The first argument is the grades underscore range variable. The second argument is the girls underscore grades variable. The third argument is color. Let's use red color for girls. Again, use another scatter method for the boys grades in the same way. The first argument is the grades underscore range. The second argument is the boys underscore grades variable. The third argument is the color we want to use to represent the boys marks. Let's use blue. Now, use the set underscores label method of axe object to sets label grades range. Then set underscore you label of the axe object to set grade scored. Again use set underscore title method and the argument is the scatter plot. Finally, use the plt dot show method to show the scatter plot. Run the code cell. Now, we can see the scatter plot. Alright. We've learned how to plot scatter plot. We are making good progress. Next, we will learn to plot area plot. The difference between a line graph and an area graph is that the region below the line in the line graph is filled in with a specified color or texture. Plotting data points on a Cartesian coordinate grid is the first step in the creation of an area graph. Next, a line is drawn to connect the points, and finally, the area below the finish line is filled in. Let's start coding to plot an area plot. In this example, we will represent the turnover of an ice cream company using an area plot. First of all, import, date time. We will need it to assign the time on the axes. Then, import, numpy, as, np. After that, import, pandas, as, pd. Finally, import, matplotlib, dot, piplot, as, plt. So, importing library is completed. Now we can use these libraries to plot the area plot. Define a variable named turnover. Then create a list with 2, 7, 14, 17, 20, 27, 30, 38, 25, 18, 6, and 1. Now, access the fill underscore between method of plt object. Here we have to pass several arguments. The first argument is np, dot, arrange with 12. The second argument is the turnover variable. 
The third argument is the color. Let's use sky blue color. The fourth argument is the alpha. Set it to 0.4. Now, access the plot method of PLT object. Again, use the NP, dot, arrange, with 12, as the first argument. The second argument is the turnover. The color is slate blue. Then the alpha is 0 0.6. Let's use line width too. Now, use the tick underscore params method of PLT object. The argument is label size equals 12. Then use this ticks method of PLT object. This time pass the NP, dot, arrange, with 12, and NP, dot, arrange with 1, and 13, as the arguments. After that, Use this label, with arguments, month, and size equals 12. Then, use your labels, with arguments, turnover, k euros, of ice cream. Then size, equals, 12. Next, we need to set the y-axis limit using the plt, dot, elim method. The argument is bottom equals zero. Finally, show the area using the plt, dot, show, method. Here, we can see the area plot. So, now you know how to plot area plots in Python. Let's learn how to plot the pie chart. A pie chart is a circle with slices cut out to show the relationship between numbers. In a pie chart, the length of the arc of each slice is equal to the amount it shows. A pie chart represents the relationship between different numbers using a circular with slices cut out of it. If you look at a pie chart, you'll see that the circumference of each slice is proportional to the value it represents. Let's code to draw a pie chart. We are going to use the same example we used for the bar plot. However, this time, we will use the pie chart. First of all, from, matplotlib, import, piplot, as, plot. Then, import, numpy, as, np. After that, define a variable. Let's name it, figure then use the figure method of plt object. Declare another variable named ax. Then use the add underscore axes method with arguments 0, 0, 1, 1. After that, use the axis method of ax object. Then use the equal parameter. Now, declare a variable named language. And then make it a list of LC, C, C, Sharp, Java, and Python. Then create another list named student and the elements are. 23, 17, 35, 29, and 12. After that, use the pi method of plt object. The first argument of this object is the student. The second argument is the labels, equals, language. The third argument is autopt equals, percentage, 1, decimal point, 2, f, percentage, and percentage. 
Finally, use the PLT, dot, show, method, and run the program. Here is our pie chart. Alright. Now you know enough about data visualization. You can also plot the key plots. That means, one more skill of data science has been unlocked. Let's go to the next module.